Hello, welcome back to my channel. When you study factoring polynomials, you will be given these uh, factoring formulas. So you have here factoring the GCF. In this case, your GCF is C. In this expression, your GCF is A. And you have here difference of two squares. Okay, so you write it as a product of two binomials, sum and difference. And then factoring perfect square trinomials, because these are trinomials that you can write as a perfect square. And then difference of two cubes, and then sum of two cubes. And your teacher might tell you afterwards that sum of two squares is not factorable. I won't be surprised if you think that this statement is true because I have read several math textbooks already which say the same thing. In this video, I'm going to convince you that this statement is misleading and we will discuss a strategy on how to factor sum of two squares in case they are factorable. Keep in mind that here we are talking about factoring polynomials with integer coefficients and we want all factors to be polynomials with integer coefficients too. You might see this statement in the following way. a squared plus b squared is not factorable. Although this is true if you're factoring a squared plus b squared in terms of a and b only, but if a and b represents any polynomials, okay, then this statement is incorrect. Let's have some examples. So consider this x raised to 6 plus 64. This is a sum of two squares, okay, two squares of uh, two polynomials. So you have here x cubed is a polynomial and eighth is a constant polynomial. So we can also write x raised to 6 plus 64 as sum of two cubes. It's the cube of x squared plus cube of 4. And we know already that the sum of two cubes is factorable. And we can write it down as a plus b. So your a here is x squared and your b is equal to 4. So a plus b times the trinomial a squared minus ab. So that is 4x squared plus b squared, which is equal to 16. Uh, to generalize this example, we can have x raised to 6 plus y raised to 6. So the, although this is a sum of two squares, okay, we can also write it down as sum of two cubes, which is again clearly a factorable expression. And we can factor it out as x squared plus y squared, so that is a plus b times the square of the first term. So x raised to 4 minus the product of these two terms x squared y squared plus the square of the last term which is equal to y raised to 4. These examples show that sum of two squares may still be factorable and this is already the complete factorization of this one. We cannot write x squared plus 4 already uh, as product of uh, two polynomials of lower degrees, also uh, with uh, x raised to 4 minus 4x squared plus 16, because in this case, we're talking about uh, factors only that are polynomials with integer coefficients. So also for x raised to 6, y raised to 6, this is already the complete factorization. Now, what if a squared plus b squared is not a sum of two cubes? How do we determine whether it is factorable or not? Let me share with you a strategy and you may call this completing the square method. The idea here is to write a squared plus b squared as difference of two squares by completing the square. So here we're going to add 2ab. And then, of course, we need to balance these uh, equations. Make sure that this expression is equal to a squared plus b squared. So if you add 2ab to make this a perfect square trinomial, then we also need to subtract 2ab to make sure that this expression is equal to a squared plus b squared. Now, as you can see, this sum here, this uh, trinomial is a perfect square trinomial. So we can write it down as a square of a plus b. 
and then minus 2ab. So it's clear from this expression that we can factor it out if 2ab is a perfect square. Let's have an example. So here we have x raised to 4 plus 4y raised to 4. So this is a sum of two squares. It's a square of x squared plus the square of 2y squared. So if this is our a, x squared, and b is 2y squared, so 2ab okay, is equal to 2 times x squared times 2y squared. So that is 4x squared y squared, which is a perfect square. It is a square of a polynomial with integer coefficient. So by this, this expression is a factorable expression. And we can write it as a product of uh, two polynomials of lower degrees with integer coefficients. So we're going to do completing the square. So here, to make this a perfect square trinomial, you add 4x squared y squared. But of course, we also have to subtract 4x squared y squared okay, to make sure that this expression is equal to the original sum, which is x raised to 4 plus 4y raised to 4. Now, we ha already have here a perfect square trinomial. And we can write this down as the square of x squared plus 2y squared. Okay. Now, here we have a difference of two squares, which is a factorable expression. And if this is like a squared minus b squared, then the factors are a minus b times a plus b. And we usually write the factors in this form. It's like in decreasing powers of some variable. In this case, it's decreasing powers in the variable x. So we can see from this example that this sum of two squares can be written as a product of two polynomials of lower degrees, okay, degree two polynomial, degree two polynomial, and with integer coefficients. So it is a factorable expression. Let's have another example. So consider 4x raised to 4 plus 81y raised to 8. So we know that this is a sum of two squares, we can write it down as the square of 2x squared plus the square of 9y raised to 4. Now, to check whether this sum of two squares is factorable or not, so we look at the expression 2ab. So this is our a and this is our b. So 2ab is equal to 2 times 2x squared, so that is 4x squared times 9y raised to 4, that is 36x squared y raised to 4. And this is equivalent to, it's equal to the square of 6x y raised to 2. So it's a square of a polynomial with integer coefficient. So therefore, it is factorable. And how do we factor it out? So again, we complete the square. We have here a plus 2ab and then plus uh, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So you'll get this expression here, a plus b quantity squared minus 2ab. So take note that when you expand this one, okay, you'll get a perfect squared trinomial. It's a trinomial wherein this is the first term. This is the third term, and the middle term will be 2 times 2x squared times 9y raised to 4, which is equal to 36x squared y raised to 4. So when you complete the square, we have to subtract also this one, minus 36x squared y raised to 4, because in, this, in the expansion of this perfect square trinomial, we have positive 36x squared y raised to 4. And now, we can already write this expression as a difference of two squares since this is a perfect square and we know that difference of two squares is factorable and we can write it as a product of a minus b so in this case this is our a squared minus b squared so this is a minus b times a plus b and we can write the factors in decreasing powers of x as this expression now, let's have a simple example that will show you the importance of this completing the square method in factoring polynomials. Consider this difference of x raised to 6 and y raised to 6. 
here we can write the expression as difference of uh, two squares. It's the square of x cubed minus the square of y cubed. And using the uh, difference of two squares formula, we'll get difference and a sum okay, of a and b. So we have here a minus b times a plus b. And now the factors are difference and sum of two cubes. So we know that they are factorable. So using the factoring formulas, we'll get factors of x cubed minus y cubed is x minus y times x squared plus xy plus y squared. And factors of x cubed plus y cubed is equal to x plus y times x squared minus xy plus y squared. And this is already the complete factorization of this expression, x raised to 6 minus y raised to 6. But if you also see that this expression can be written as difference of two cubes, okay, just like this one, we can write it as difference of cube of x squared and cube of y squared. So we know it is also factorable. We can write it down as x squared minus y squared. Okay, so a cube minus b cube is equal to a minus b times the trinomial a squared. You square the first term and then multiply the two terms and then now you have opposite the sign. So if this is minus, you'll get plus here. So x squared, y squared, and then plus the square of the last term. So y raised to 4. So the last term here is always positive. And here we see that this is a difference of two squares. So it is factorable. We can write it down as x minus y times x plus y. Now the question here is in this factorization, okay, we have x minus y times x plus y times the product of these two trinomials. But as you can see from here, we have the x minus y and then x plus y. And then we have a uh, polynomial of degree 4. This first factoring procedure tells us that we can write this trinomial here as a product of these two trinomials. So how do we do that? Here you need the technique which is called completing the square. So here you have x raised to 4 plus x squared y squared plus y raised to 4. Now we do completing the square. We make this x raised to 4 plus y raised to 4 a perfect square trinomial. So the middle term must be 2x squared y squared. Now we need to make sure that the expression on the right is equal to the expression on the left. So here we only have x squared y squared. Here we already have 2x squared y squared. So we need to subtract x squared y squared. And this is a perfect square trinomial. So you can write it down as the square of x squared plus y squared. And this expression is also a perfect square. So you have here minus the square of xy. And since it's a difference of two squares, we can factor it to uh, a minus b. Okay, so if this is your a and this is your b, a minus b times a plus b. And again, we can write it down in decreasing powers of x. So as you can see from here, if you know how to do completing the square, we are sure that this expression can be written as product of this two trinomials. So therefore, we'll get the same factorization for x raised to 6 minus y raised to 6, even if you write it as a difference of two squares or difference of two cubes. Okay, that's it for this lesson. I hope I have knocked out any confusion that you have about sum of two squares. If you enjoy the tips that you learned here, please don't forget to hit the like button below and share this to your friends. I release new videos every week, so if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure to do so to learn more strategies in math. Again, this is Dennis of KO Math. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.